What's going on, baseball fans? So my Red Sox have gotten off to a terrible start here in 2020, and I'm already looking ahead to next season. So in this video, I'm gonna fix the Boston Red Sox. There's a lot to do, so let's not waste any time. Let's get into this. The first thing to do is to let Jackie Bradley Jr. walk in free agency. I would try to trade him for something by the deadline to maybe get a prospect back, but as much as I love Jackie Bradley Jr., the Red Sox should be fine without him with guys like Verdugo and Benintendi. The next guy to let walk is Martin Perez. I just don't see him being effective as a starter in Boston, but maybe out of the bullpen he could provide something. If he comes back for a cheap deal for a bullpen role, then maybe I could see it, but as a starter, no way. The first guy I want to bring back is Kevin Pillar. He's a great guy to have on the team, plays good defense, gives a team energy with his all-out play, and can hit very decent from the right side. He gives me 2013 Johnny Gomes vibes. The next guy is Jose Peraza. Peraza has had a great start in 2020 and looks to be back to his 2018 form. Whether he's starting at second or coming off the bench or playing anywhere else in the infield, he's a valuable player to have on your team. The next guy is Mitch Moreland. Moreland has been as steady as they come for Boston. He's a team leader, plays great defense at first base, and still has a solid bat for the lower half of the order. With Tristan Cassis still at least a couple of years away, keeping Moreland will help bridge the gap. And last but not least, I have Brandon Workman. Workman's been a fixture for the Red Sox for years, whether in middle relief, setting up, or even closing games. He has been solid for the Red Sox and should absolutely come back. This may come as a surprise, but the Red Sox have enough bats in the lineup, and this will give the Red Sox more flexibility to move guys around in the field and in the lineup. Getting rid of Martinez will free the Red Sox of about $19 million in salary for 2021, which will help out a lot in free agency. J.D. Martinez can either opt out of his deal and become a free agent after 2021, or the Red Sox could try to trade him. I could see teams such as the Braves, Cardinals, or Indians maybe being interested because they could all use another bat. It would be preferable to trade him instead of letting him opt out because trading him will surely bring back a prospect or two, which the Red Sox need. This one may also be a bit surprising to people, but I think the Red Sox should try to trade Michael Chavis for a starting pitcher. With the Red Sox lacking prospects, they would really only be able to trade someone like Michael Chavis, who has to move around in the infield for the Red Sox right now to even get some playing time. I think he could be a decent trade piece considering he's only 24 years old with power. And as of right now, Boston has Bobby Dahlbeck and Tristan Cassis as corner outfielders in their system, so I think moving on from Chavis would be fine. I would go after someone that is cost controlled. Maybe Matthew Boyd from Detroit. Detroit may be wanting to start grooming some younger guys. Maybe Joe Musgrove or Jamison Talon in Pittsburgh. Neither are free agents until 2023 and Talon did just undergo Tommy John, so maybe the Pirates would be interested in moving on from him and Bloom can take a chance on him. There's Brad Keller on the Royals. He could be interesting considering the Royals have an influx of starting pitching prospects that could be coming up in the next couple years. There's also Dinosin Lamette or Cal Quantrill on the Padres. Lamette won't be a free agent until 2024, while Quantrill won't be one until 2026. Maybe Bloom can work something out to include young righty Michael Baez to add to the bullpen. Whatever it is, I think Chavis would be a good trade chip for a young and controlled starting pitcher. The first free agent that the Red Sox need to sign is George Springer. With Mookie Betts moving on to the Dodgers, along with J.D. Martinez leaving town, it's time to sign a bat. Springer for his career has averaged a 269 average, 35 homers, 92 RBIs, and an 847 OPS for his career. In 2019, he had a career year, hitting 292 with 39 homers, 96 RBIs, a 383 on base, and a 974 OPS overall. He's also good on defense, averaging three runs saved defensively a year, as well as a 1.8 UZR. He had his best year defensively in 2019 though, in which he saved 12 runs along with an 8.8 .8 UZR. This would give the Red Sox an outfield of Andrew Benintendi, Alex Verdugo, and George Springer. Let's sign Springer to an eight year deal worth around 200 million, which should be around 25 million per year. The next guy the Red Sox need to sign is John Lester. With no starting pitching waiting in the wings down in the minors, the Red Sox will need to get a pitcher via free agency. And I think the best option is John Lester. I know what you might be thinking. I just want the Red Sox to sign Lester because he was a former Red Sox great. Not so fast. When you look at the rest of the starting pitchers that are free agents, they're going to be very pricey. Trevor Bauer should be getting a very big contract. Marcus Stroman should also be getting a big contract. I could see Lester getting a contract anywhere from maybe 15 to 18 million per year. 
As for Lester, in the last three seasons from 2017 to 2019, he's averaged 32 starts, 178 innings pitched, a record of 15-8, and eight, an ERA of 4.03, and a strikeout per nine of 8.3, and also three walks per nine. He did have a bit of a down 2019 for his standards, but he was dealing with some hamstring issues early on, and overall, it wasn't a bad year. In 31 starts and 172 innings pitched, he went 13-10 and 10 with a 4.46 ERA, even though he did have a 4.26 FIP, a little under 9 strikeouts per 9, and a little under 2 walks per 9. Also in 2019, he was able to reach the 170 innings pitch mark again, which he's done every year since 2008. That's incredible. Overall, Lester's a workhorse and the Red Sox need a guy that won't be too expensive and has shown can be reliable. The next thing to do is sign a reliever for cheap. There will be some solid relievers on the market that shouldn't cost too much, like Andrew Chafin, Tyler Clippard, Pedro Baez, or Trevor May. I think this bullpen could use another established name to add to the mix. Let's be real here, Rafael Devers stinks on defense. I'm sorry, but I don't care about any argument that anyone has defending his defense. The advanced numbers show he is poor in the field and he hasn't really improved all that much. His true abilities lie in his bat. I don't mind if he plays in the field here or there to give a guy a day off, but he needs to be the DH. As for Bobby Dahlbeck, he is the next really good Red Sox player to come up to the major leagues. In his career in the minors, he's averaged a 263 batting average, about 20 homers, 64 RBIs, a 362 on base, a 505 slugging, and an 867 OPS. In 2019, playing at AA and AAA, he hit 27 homers with 73 RBIs, a 356 on base, a 460 slugging, and an 816 OPS overall. On defense, though, he is much better than Devers thanks to his good hands, footwork, and ability to read the bat off the ball. So if I were the one fixing the Red Sox, that's what I would do. Tell me down below in the comments what you think. Tell me down below in the comments what you would do to fix the Red Sox. But that's all I got for right now. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you next time.